Let's take a look at the 1st of November through history. It's now a bonus feature at 9.40ish, as well as a treat for early risers. On this day in 1976, New York band Talking Heads signed with Sire Records. Although they were offered a deal a year earlier, they only accepted once they thought they were studio ready. It saps the life out, life out of you, doesn't it? <laughs> uh, as Talking Heads, this must be the place other songs you might have heard include Once in a Lifetime and Psycho Killer. They're part of the new wave movement mixing punk, funk and art rock. You never guess who we booked for tomorrow. <laughs> David Byrne. Uh, on this day in 1967, the film Cool Hand Luke opened in American theatres and became well known for Paul Newman's performance as one of the most famous anti-heroes. Get yourself a sweet Madonna dressed in grandstone setting on pedestal of Avalonie shell. That's Paul Newman singing Plastic Jesus from Cool Hand Luke. It was one of Kevin Marr's top five Paul Newman films when we asked him about it the other week. It's well worth the watch. Have you watched it yet, Asma? <laughs> Have you? No. Oh, I'm waiting for you. Oh, fine. We'll okay. watch it together. All right. Let's simulcast it on our TVs. <laughs> At home. Uh, yeah, that's not going to happen. On this day in 1986, a leak at a chemical factory in Switzerland caused the Rhine to turn red after a fire broke out and caused damage to the storage unit. Thousands of highly poisonous chemicals leaked into the Rhine River. In the Times today, on this day in 1990, Sir Geoffrey Howe resigned as Prime Deputy Prime Minister. Uh, the deputy is very important there, criticising how <laughs> Margaret Thatcher was handling negotiations over Europe. In uh, Parliament 12 days later, he said she was undermining the policies of her own Chancellor. It's rather like sending your opening batsmen to the crease, only for them to find, the moment the first balls are bowled, that their bats have been broken before the game, by the team captain. <laughs> now, the following day, Michael Heseltine mounted a leadership challenge. Margaret Thatcher left Downing Street on the 28th of November 1990 after 11 years as Prime Minister. And finally, on this day, the 1st of November in 1604, William Shakespeare's Othello was performed for the first time at Whitehall Palace in London. I would not kill thy unprepared spirit. No, heavens forfend, I would not kill thy soul. Talk you of killing? I, I do. Then heaven have mercy on me. Amen with all my heart. If you say so, I hope you will not kill me. Huh. And yet I fear you. Why I should fear I know not, since guiltiness I know not. Let's speak to Dr. Abigail Rockison Woodall, Senior Lecturer in Shakespeare and Theatre and Deputy Director of the Institute of Education. Uh, good morning to you, Abigail. Good morning. Um, I'm good very morning. fond of uh, Othello. It's, it's, it sort of sits between Hamlet and Lear. Does it get overlooked a bit, do you think, as a, as a play sometimes? Um, no, I, I don't think it... I don't actually think it does particularly. I mean, I think it's it's one of those plays that ever since that, that first performance has actually been fairly regularly performed there's no sort of period where it really drops out and um stops being performed unlike plays like sort of king john um which we rarely mm. see really um, uh, was it controversial at the time do you think uh, this, this play whose, whose central character um is a bore in, in in the terms of the time i'm not sure that it would have been um controversial as such um but there were there were other plays of the of the period that had Moors in them. Um, the I suppose the thing about Othello is that that he's he's much more rounded than than a lot of the um, African characters in other early modern plays. Um, so actually. You know, although obviously, spoiler alert, he ends up uh, killing his wife. He actually, um, he's actually quite a sympathetic character and a noble character in the process of the play. And it's quite thoughtful. I mean, it, it, we have to take into account when it was written and, of course, the sort of the yes. politics of the age. But with that in mind, it is quite a thoughtful account of race relations, isn't it? And, and, and a black man marrying a white woman. Yes. I mean... Um, Obviously, Desdemona's father is not 
thrilled when uh, she finds out that when, when he finds out that she's that she's married Othello. Although um, it was interesting, I remember hearing the director Nicholas Heitner talk about this to some A level students and say, "Well, look, you know." It's her father's friend who sort of comes over for dinner sometimes and, you know, who they know. And she runs off with him without asking her father. And, you know, she's a she's a teenager or she's in her early 20s. So I remember him posing it to a group of A-level students and saying, do you think your dad would be thrilled if you <laughs> ran off with somebody, you know, twice your age without asking his permission so um, the other thing is if you were to do a list of shakespearean baddies yes. iago would probably be and maybe i don't know if he's a thing that makes the play a bit as well but iago would be in, in the top five shakespearean baddies i think probably absolutely and i think you know iago is has gradually become almost the part that people really want to you know or at least one of the parts that people really want to play um it he is yeah he's he's an archetypal uh baddie and yet he has quite a lot of soliloquies something so sort of glorious about the play is that Iago talks directly to the audience and we get to sort of understand him a bit and so Shakespeare's sort of playing with our mind a bit there because um we can't kind of objectify him as a baddie 